Travis. Give me a hand with this tarp. All right. What did I tell you, Ben? Isn't she a beauty? Yeah, she's a beauty, all right, but uh, just what is she? Something we need to finish our government contract, Barnabas. What? Locomotive boiler. Fleet with firebox. Well, it's kind of small, isn't it? Once I get a frame and some wheels under, she'll make the sweetest little work engine this side of Cincinnati. And with the second engine, we can complete our government contract on time. All right, get away from it. I said get away from it. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're from the VPS and D. You the proprietor? I'm going to give you boys a break. You get out of here now. I'm going to pretend like I've never seen you at all. Who are you? Don't make no difference who I am. I work for Sam McGinney. You did? Well, I had trouble with him up at Cripple Creek one time. Move out. What's he doing in these parts? Or did he smell of his sheep ready for fleecing? I said move out. One thing about Sam, he always had a good nose on him. When it catches up with you, they're gonna have to carry you out. You tell McGinney that I thank him for the reception committee. You also tell him that Ben Calhoun's in town. You're looking forward to paying him back. negotiating with Phillips to buy the machine works. Without that boiler, we can't possibly meet our deadline. I know. Well, we've got two problems. Again, he's got about five gunmen backing him up. And secondly, our total assets amount to whatever's in your pocket right now, which is about $53 at last count, which wouldn't even buy the rivets on that boiler. And I don't think Phillips can give us any credit. I know. Well, then we better hope for a miracle. I'm working on one right now. Did you get them? Right here. What are those? Did a good job, Barnabas. They're going to help us in our negotiation with Phillips. Well, what's going to help you with McGinney and his five gunmen? Well, yeah. Gunmen aren't going to do anything but give him a false sense of security. See if we can't shake him up a little. Come on. That's my final offer. And it's a generous one, I think, considering the circumstances, Mr. Phillips. The boiler itself is worth three times this. If you could get a buyer. Well, you'll pay in cash? I will, that. You mind if we talk it over? Please do go right ahead. Take your time. Think about $2,000, Mr. Phillips. Did you hear that? Well, so McGiddy's offering thousands. They're going to laugh at our $412 and our promises. Well, we got to do something. We will, brothers. When the time comes. <laughs> me boys told me you were in town, Calhoun. I figured they would. Now, why don't you tell this boy what to do before he busts his buttons, boy? Oh, Elton Wilcox. Sit down and have a drink before you leave, Calhoun. Thank you. Oh, do you suppose it was? They me up there. Quite a while, and I haven't changed. I still get what I set out after. Betsy's what the old man calls that boiler. Betsy's what I'm going to get. Well, I think you've got the determination, all right. But you still haven't got any class. I think I asked you over here to insult me. You asked me to sit down because you didn't know what else to do with me. Now, I'm also interested in the boiler. Let me ask you one question. Now, I've got a train broken down on a Cripple Creek side. There's not another boiler between here and St. Louis, and I got enough men to back me up. Now, what makes you think that you can move in? Because this isn't Cripple Creek. It's Denver. It's not a small town. It's a big town. You can't operate here the way you operate there. Don't count on that. I never count on this place. Phillips? Uh, yes, I'm Phillips. My name is Ben Calhoun, president of the Buffalo Pass Scout Block of the Fine Thrill. I'm interested in your boiler. Well, I've just about made a deal for Betsy with Mr. McGetty here. Well, I've got a proposition for you. 
Uh, before you get roped into anything, there's something you ought to know. Uh, Mr. Calhoun, he runs a blue sky railroad that's long on promises but short on cash. I'd have a look at the color of his money before I talk to him. Well, there's no point in being evasive, Mr. Calhoun. It's common knowledge that I'm just about ready for a receivership. That's why I have to operate in cash. Mr. Calhoun! Sorry to interrupt, sir, but these telegrams just came in. But I have to wait. Well, sir, they're urgent. Excuse me. Tell him the answer is no. Tell him I'll meet him on the 10th in St. Louis. No stock, all cash. Also, tell him I want an option on his border for 24 hours. I'll wire him tonight. Yes, sir. Now, what's the proposition so far? The down payment? No, that was for my whole operation. Well, I'm going to double that offer. And it's just for the boiler. I'm not interested in taking over your whole operation. You really think you can push me into a corner, Calhoun? I'm not trying to push you into a corner. I'm trying to bring you out into the open. I'm going to suggest we have a public auction right here in front of the whole town. Just what I had in mind. All right. All right, when do you want that auction? The sooner the better. What about right now? Well, you just bit off more than you can chew. You're on, Calhoun. You're on. Everything will be ready within the hour. And good day, sir. Good day. Drinks are on a BPS and D. Mr. Find out. The Giddy's boys have really been painting the town red, bragging a lot. Find out what his limit was. One story says he has 10,000 cash, another makes it 11. I better count on 12 just to be on the safe side. Nothing I'd enjoy more than pushing him beyond his limit just to watch him squirm. Give me your gun. Gentlemen, we will proceed. Did you get the papers? All you have to do is fill them out. The terms are cash. Boiler will not leave the premises until paid for. You know what to do. Now, this boiler is fully guaranteed. A fine piece of merchandise. Gentlemen, what am I bid? Do I hear $1,000? $5,000. I have $5,000. Do I hear $6,000? Do I hear six? $5,500. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear six thousand five hundred? Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. Do I hear eleven thousand? I have ten thousand dollars. Eleven thousand dollars. Eleven thousand. I have eleven thousand dollars. Do I hear twelve? Twelve thousand. I have twelve thousand dollars. Do I hear thirteen thousand? Do I hear thirteen? Twelve thousand dollars. I have once. Twelve thousand dollars twice. Twelve thousand dollars three times. Sold to Mr. Ben Calhoun for twelve thousand dollars. Drinks are on me. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! It's not over yet! I'm saying you're bluffing, Calhoun. I'm saying if you've got the money to back up your bid, we've got the right to see it. I say you've got no rights at all. I'm doing business with Mr. Phillips now. Then I'll tell you to your face. I'm calling you a liar, Calhoun. to design bridges or locomotives. I picked locomotives because I found railroad people a lot more interesting. He was right out there, wasn't he? You don't have the money to back up your bid. Not anything close to it. Better days. Better days. 
Well, I suppose you realize what'll happen to you if I turn you over to that mob out there. Probably skin me alive. Can you think of an alternative? A good one. I've got 35 miles of track to lay between now and the 1st of August. I can do it. The government's gonna owe me $100,000. With the engine that we'll put around that boiler of yours, I can do it very easily. In that envelope, you're gonna find a transfer of 5% of the total stock of the BPS and D. Also, there's an agreement in there allowing me to buy it back in 90 days for $25,000. $25,000? If you're gonna gamble with me, you're gonna take part of the profits. What if we lose? If we lose, all you'll have lost is 90 days. You still got the title of the boiler. Well, McGinty did bid $11,000, and I do suppose he's got the cash. Oh, I suppose. But I never could stand a man who'd take advantage of another. Mr. Calhoun, I would suggest you pour us another drink. It may take a little time to get these papers in order. Then we've got a deal? We've got a deal. and you've got to be more careful. Help him up. You know who you've got there, Elton? It's Ben Calhoun's friend. You don't want to get old Ben Calhoun all riled up, do you? Look at that dirty fool. Just can't take that back to old Ben. And that flour sack with a big hole in it. Ben won't like that. Oh. All right, you want to fight, do you, boy? Well, you're going to get one. You tell Ben Calhoun he won the first round, but there's another one coming up. Turn him loose. Your boss tricked me out of that boiler, boy. But you'll tell him he'll never get to use it. All right, there's nothing to see here. He says you may have the boiler now, but you'll never get to use it. Well, that's McGinney's wishful thinking. You're gonna be all right. Probably have a shiner, but that's about the extent of it. I should never have let them jump me like that. They take the time to place. There wasn't much you could do about it. Now go fix us some coffee. We're gonna need it. All right. <clears throat> they could get pride suffered the biggest injury. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Calhoun, we was at the auction. So? Well, we figured that you were expecting some trouble, and as soon as you're kind of short-handed... We, we figured we might go along with you. Yeah. And how much would all this extra help cost me? Oh, nothing. Uh, just a free ride to Cotter's Gap. You get that far, and you'll be clear. And we live up near there. You know the track, then? Oh, yeah, every oh, yeah. twist in it. I was a gang dancer when they was building it. He's right, if we get to Cotter's Gap. We can highball that far. No, Ben, we gotta make a water stop at High Ridge Tank. McGinney could be waiting for us. Well, let's just figure he will be waiting for us and keep our eyes open. All right, you boys get on. We can use you. <laughs> You got yourself a pretty good boiler there, huh? Oh, not just pretty good. One of the best in the country. <laughs> How's it work? You mean you've never seen one up close? No. Well, it's... It's really pretty simple. Something doesn't give up. Where's Barnabas? He's still in the galley, I guess. <laughs> Don't let me interrupt you. Thinking about going into the ring? He pushed me around like I was nothing. You think a little shadow boxing is going to help, huh? I got to do something. 
Well, let's see what we can do. Go ahead and put your hands up there the way you had them. Go ahead, you gotta start somewhere. Now, the whole thing about a fellow like Wilcox is he's a gut fighter. He's gotta catch you off guard. Go ahead. Swing at me a couple of times. I'll show you what I mean. Are you sure? It's all right. Well, all right. <laughs> see what the trouble is? Anybody can see those punches coming. The whole thing is to get a man relaxed, catch him off guard. Then let him have it. The element of surprise, right? That's right. Well, let me try it again. You ready? I just can't. No! <laughs> I did it, didn't I? I caught you by surprise, right? <laughs> yes, I'd say you did. You're going on real fast. <laughs> now go fix us some coffee. Yes, sir, I sure will. Thanks for the lesson. <laughs> Right about here. Yeah, that's the way I think. Ben? Well, Willard hasn't figured out where McGinney might hit us. Oh? About 15 miles from here, the track makes a wide curve. The tracks go through a narrow right in here. Lots of trees, yes. Lots of rocks to pile on the tracks. The train has to slow down for the curve. Figured they'll hit us right here. Sounds logical. Sir, there's a crossroads here. A couple of miles this side of the narrows. Yeah. Now, I figure a couple of us can kind of go around here, fire, fire a few shots, draw them out. Yeah. All right, let's try it. You ride up the camp, you stay with the water. All right! Got him out to wait here. Nothing doing. I'm going with you. Hold it right there. No, sir. Nobody's going anywhere. Put your guns down. Put them down. Would you come over here. Great the fireman and the engineer bring him down here. Look, you're barking up the wrong tree. We haven't got enough money among us to buy a box of cigars. Well, we don't want your money. Just stay put, nobody will get hurt. We're taking the boiler. Drop it and crack it. You're gonna ruin it for good. Get up there and help him. Come on. All right, all right. Listen, if, if you're that determined to do it, I'll, I'll see what I can do to help you. You're gonna help him steal it? Why of us, it's no good to anybody if they ruin it. How about it? All right. No tricks. I'm gonna give you one last chance to reconsider. Now, once you put the boiler in the wagon, it's gonna be too late. Oh, we ain't gonna steal that boiler, Mr. Calhoun. Not? No, we're going to pay you for it. We're going to send you a little bit of money until it's all paid for. That's right. Come on, friend. Give us a hand. Yes. I got it. 
I were you, Mr. Calhoun, I wouldn't try following us. You'd be up against a lot more than you bargained for. Now that you've got it, how are you going to make it work? We ain't. He is. Get aboard. Now, just a minute. You wouldn't want to see anything happen to this boiler, would you? Maybe you forget what we got riding on this boiler, Ben. A little piece of the railroad, remember? I'll go along and keep an eye on it while you catch up. Come aboard, brother! Let's go, Jesse! Come on! Yeah, let's go! Come on! I don't know. I think those fellas are loco. But I suppose we'll catch up with them, right? Not on foot, we won't. We're gonna need some horses. Horses? How are we gonna get horses around here? <laughs> I got a hunch they're gonna be waiting for us. Just up ahead. Betsy, what have you done with her? Well, she's been stolen. Stolen? Check the rest of the train. Now, use your head, McGinney. Where am I going to hide a boiler? It's been stolen on that set. It's going to take both of us to get it back. Both of us? Now, you've got men, guns, horses. Then why should I deal with you? Because I know where to start looking. All right, what do you suggest? A merger of forces. A truce till we get the boiler back. And then what? After that, it's every man for himself again. That's a deal. Good. Get your men and horses, load them up in here. We'll go back down the track and start loading. They're coming! Yes, blue and girls! They're coming! Wake up! Wake up! They're coming! What is it, George? What's happened? They're coming, Mr. Mayor! They got it! They got it! You see! We're delivered. That's what happened. Oh, look at that. That's the prettiest. I, I know we're all anxious to get down to the mill. But first, for the three fine citizens of this town who went down to Denver and come back not only with the means for our salvation, but with an engineer to run it first. Parent, our engineer! Yeah. Welcome to Coded Town, Mr. Tarrant. Now, right, let's get her down to the boiler. Come on, 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 there's something you better understand. Miss Coulter, Constance. All right, Miss Coulter, I'm not here by choice. They didn't buy that boiler. They stole it. I see. I didn't think they had enough money. Yeah, well, I'm a willing hostage. I, I don't know why they took the boiler. I don't even care. Because it's got to go back. Now, the Hope Boys, they don't understand that. Well, now, maybe you better understand something, Mr. Tyrant. This is the original hard luck town. We fought off claim jumpers, fire, plague, you name it. And then the boiler at the sawmill blew up. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that new boiler is heaven sent to give us our one last chance. I don't care whether they begged or borrowed or stole it. We are not going to give it up. 
What happened, Mr. Tarrant? Then you know you can't keep the boiler, sir. Well, look at it this way. Being a God-fearing man and mayor of this town, I can't, uh, I can't be party to a theft. That's a healthy point of view. So, uh, we'll draw up the papers this evening. Well, what papers? Uh, the contract, the bill of sale. See, we got $412 to put in. And uh, we'll make a deal with your railroad to haul the lumber well, first. Wait a minute. You see, down in Denver, uh, rough lumber is fetching a smart price. Well, Mayor, if you want to talk deal, you talk to Ben Calhoun. He's uh, the president. Uh, and even if you could keep the boiler here, you'd never make it work. Why, some of our boys is pretty smart at machinery. They'll find a way to rig it. Hey, what are you doing? Wait a so we try it out. A little water, a little wood, fire it up, see if it holds the pressure. Yeah. Well, you'll split that thing wide open if you don't know what you're doing. Those valves have got to be open. This is a complicated piece of machinery. You can't run it like an ordinary boiler. You gotta have a throttle, a water glass, an injector. No, you didn't. See anything around here we can use? Oh, it's impossible. Well, not if you help us. I'm here to watch the boiler, not to work it. We brought you here to fix it. If you didn't know what to do, you shouldn't have taken it. All right. Stand back. Wait a minute. Stand back. Hold it, hold it. Let it be. You gonna do it or not? All right. Make a deal with you. I'll look over these spare parts. I'll see what I can do. But I'm the only one who touches it. Agreed? That's agreed. Good All enough. Right. All right. Why well, do you think he's stolen? It don't matter. We're in business. Your Mr. Calhoun will sign that contract my father offered? Not likely. I'm doing a lot more than I should right now. Well, I don't know. You did take unfair advantage of us bidding up that boiler to three times what it's worth. It was important to us. Just as important as it was to Colter Town to steal it. Where did you learn about boilers? Home back east. MIT. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology. You're a long way from home. Yeah, the edge of nowhere. But I didn't mean it that way. I know what you meant. And it used to be like that, but it's not anymore. This is our home now. We came out from Missouri because the promise of what's here is better than what we left behind. There's work for us here. And there's hope. That's what that boiler represents to us. And without it, there's nothing. Do you think the men would mind working tonight? Have you figured out a way to get it to work? At least in theory. You see, the big problem here is whether the drive shaft can handle the torque. I want you to understand something. I'm doing this to show you how to make it work when you get your own boiler. Because that one's got to go back. Well, for now, it's enough to see that sawmill working again. All right, let's go. <laughs>
Let's see if she works. Because you've got a good heart. Maybe just because I like you. A sawmill? That's impossible. They've done it all right, and your man's helping them. That's a lie. How many men did they have? Ten, fifteen, maybe. He'll take them by surprise. They'll probably wreck the border in the process. Dave's helping them, there's got to be a reason for them. I'll ride on ahead. Any luck at all, I'll bring that boiler out of there without a fight. All right, go ahead. Give me three hours. One hour. Two. All right, but the boy stays here with me. No, he's not going to stay here. I need him with me. Well, how do I know the three of you won't run off with that boiler? Nobody's going to run off with the boiler, McGinney. You can rest assured of that. It's either going to be my way or it's not going to be at all. All right. Go ahead. Trust him, McGinney? Of course, I trust him. I trust him to get his full head blown off and those men in town along with him. And there'll be nobody left to stop us. Well, I figure maybe a thousand more speak an hour. 24 hours a day, and I try to make it good. <laughs> We're out of the woods. We made it. We're on our feet. <laughs> Mr. Coulter, I'd like to present Mr. Calhoun and Mr. Rogers. This is Mayor Coulter. Mr. Talent's done a bang-up job here, Mr. Calhoun. He, he's done the impossible. I can see that. I uh, think I better talk to him alone. We'll see you later. Excuse us. Suppose you tell me just what's going on. Well, well, they would have ruined the boiler if I hadn't rigged it up for them. But then the people of this town aren't thieves. They're, they're just desperate. Not half as desperate as they're going to be. Guinea's on his way in here now. He'll be here in less than two hours. Now, you constructed this mechanical marvel. You take it down. Now, wait a minute. I think there are a couple of things we ought to discuss first. We haven't got anything to discuss. It's going to take time for that boiler to cool down. Ben. Now don't touch it. Uh, Dave. Now, you stay out of this, Barnabas. Just between him and me. Now, I say let's, let's let the town buy it. We can find another one. After what we've been through, you can say that. Even if we can find another motor, we haven't got the money for one. I've got all that figured out. Now, we can finish laying that track on schedule by working double shifts. We haven't got the men for double shifts, either. The whole point in getting that motor was to build a second engine to reduce the workload on the one. So what about the $25,000 Will Phillips? Oh, what the deal we've got here, you wouldn't have... We've got no deal here. I've got all the deals going right now that I can afford. Now, you either go tear that boiler down or I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let you touch it, Ben. I'm still running this railroad. And I suppose now is as good a time as any for you to be reminded. Now, if you just take a minute. Let me...
is no good, Mr. Calhoun. Nothing's gonna get solved this way. Sometimes there's not any other way you can solve it. One day I won't be able to solve it this way either. The secret is not to let anybody know when that day gets here. Right there. Put those things away. We're not armed. Well, I figure we can't take any more chances now, Mr. Calhoun. And don't mistake us. You give us any trouble and we'll kill all three of you. And ever since the day this town was founded, Mr. Calhoun, we've been peaceable here. We don't like violence. Which, uh, means, I suppose, that you're not above using. If you force us to it. And the mayor has drawn up that paper. Our terms are on that paper, and they're fair all around. We're not going to bargain. Well, I'd like to hear these fair terms, Mayor, from you. We'll take over your debt with Phillips, the whole thing. We'll contract with you to haul the lumber for us. Three months, and we'll all be making money. And if I refuse? It's that or nothing. We didn't go to Denver in a lark. Oh, no, sir. Well, we built and, and seeded and poured our blood into this place with our bare hands and our backs. We raised our families. We've been scratching all our lives. And right now, this boiler is our life to us. All our lives for yours. You force us to it. Gentlemen, I've negotiated all kinds of deals. I've gambled, played cards, shot pool. I've wheeled and dealed and I've lucked into deals. There ain't nobody yet ever forced me into one at the point of a gun. You're making a mistake, Mr. Calhoun. Now you go ahead and either hang us or shoot us. But let's do it right out here in the open in front of those kids so they can see how to get what they want when they grow up. Father, how could you? Somebody get the kids out of there. Mr. Calhoun, look at that boiler. Is that worth dying for? Is it worth killing for? No one's gonna get hurt if you'll sign this paper. And you haven't thought it through far enough. You can't afford to let us go even if I sign that ridiculous paper. And I'll have a federal marshal down on your necks inside of two weeks. And on the other hand, if you kill us, then you never would get a night's sleep. But who knows what one of these nice citizens here might decide to leave this town, or maybe get mad at the mayor and let the secret out. Once you've started, there's no end to it. That's no more talk. That boiler's our only hope. Then you haven't got any hope. And it's on my neck. Just mine. Nobody else. Oh, you're wrong. It's on all our necks. Get him. He's right. Look at you. Stay out of this. We're all in this. We built something good here. And here we are fixing to throw it all away on account of an old piece of metal. Let him take it away from here. We'll do without it. That boiler's turned us into a bunch of animals. Earl, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Earl! Where are you going? Earl! Don't you remember? We took a vote. Like they just changed their ballot. We'll uh, load the boiler onto the wagon for you. Looks like we won't have the chance. Give me two hours. Ah, oh, Calhoun, me what stopped in that too bad. Well, I see you made short work of this town. This town's got a conscience. Mayor Coulter, this is Sam McGinney. My pleasure. Now, whatever Mr. Calhoun may have told you, all deals are off. You keep your boys out of this and nobody will get hurt. All right, now. Let's see what needs to be done. Get rid of the toys. Now, we need to put that boiler onto that wagon back there. You put that thing together, didn't you? That's right. Well, then you can take it apart, put it on the wagon. 
Come on, Barnabas. Let's call up Mo. We can't let him take it. If I can get close enough to Wilcox. Yes. Yeah. Then what? Well, I don't know. What do you want? Well, sir, that's kind of hard to explain. Since to quit when me luck goes sour, Calhoun. Alton, where are you? Alton, get your man mounted up. Everybody mount up. All right, Calhoun. I've enjoyed tangling with you. But I'll be back. You can count on that. On uh, behalf of the town, Mr. Calhoun, I'd like to apologize. You already made up for the man. And that's the darndest thing I've ever seen. That's a fact. Fall out now. I've got a hunch that I can make a whole lot more money with you folks by joining you rather than fighting you or by using Betsy there to build a spare engine. You mean you're letting us have that boiler? No, I've got to pay $25,000 for that boiler, and I'm not that rich that I can give it away. But I can use it to buy a part of your business. You've got it for 20% of your business. The rights to haul your material from here on out. Sounds fair enough. Well, you got a deal. <laughs> determined to make a go out of this sawmill. As you were to hang on to that boiler, we're all going to make a lot of money. Yes! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now we need one more horse so we can get out of here. You <laughs> got it. <laughs> Give him mine. <laughs> Oh, I got it. I got it written down right here. I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. I got it. 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 I